Well, good morning. I am so honored to uh, just have this opportunity to um, be able to just chat with you two ladies. You guys are extraordinary and you have paved the way to um, allow women, especially Christian women, to talk about intimacy issues. And so I just wanted to share a little bit about who I am and then give you guys the floor to share a little bit about who you are. Um, my name is Jennifer Smith. I'm the founder of Unveiled Wife. And uh, I also wrote a devotional for wives called Wife After God. Um, my heart and passion is to encourage women in their journey of marriage and, and to um, disciple them and to always point them back to God. And really quickly, I just wanted to share with you, uh, Dr. Julie, that your book, No More Headaches, uh, revolutionized my marriage. Um, the f thank God. <laughs> Thanks, God. I do, I do praise God and I thank Him for you because um, when, when I was kind of at the peak of our hardship in marriage, um, a friend of mine gave me that book and it changed the way I saw sex in marriage and it helped me understand what my husband was going through and what his body needed and I never knew that about about sex or about marriage and, and so I just really um, appreciated those words that you wrote. So thank you. Oh, thanks, we give, we give thanks to God. <laughs> so he's just teaching both of us. Aww. And, and so um, I'm married. I've been married for seven years, and I have a 15-month-old son. And, and is he better? Because I know he was sick. He was. He was sick, and he's, he's on the mend. He's doing a little bit better. Thank you. Um, so let's hear a little bit about who you are and maybe some of the things that you guys are working on. Yeah, do you want to start? You go ahead. All right. Uh, I'm Julie Slattery. This is my my co-partner here, my worker together, Linda Dillo, and we started a ministry called Authentic Intimacy about a year and a half ago. And our passion, Jennifer, is very similar to yours, which is to encourage women in their intimate relationships and marriage, to encourage mm -hmm. them in intimacy with God, to encourage them in their role as a wife, and also, as you mentioned, a lot of what we've been working on since the beginning of the ministry is sexual intimacy mm -hmm. because uh, we have found that that area of marriage is so misunderstood and represents so much pain and conflict and confusion, mm -hmm. uh, but it can represent instead uh, just a, a wonderful way for a husband and wife to connect and even to worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, Linda? I'm just excited that God's called you, Jennifer, a young woman, not married very long. And he called me when I was a young woman. And I first wrote about marriage when I was 34 and had been married 13 years. And now I've been married 50 years. And he just doesn't let me off this top. <laughs> I just get She's to, just so good at it. No, I just get to keep talking about... Uh, what God has said in his word and what what he wants for a husband and wife, spiritually, sexually, mm. just in every way. That's awesome. And so how long have you been married, Linda? 50 years. 50 years. That is awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. And, and years. how long have you been married, Julie? Almost 20 years. Almost It'll be 20, 20 years. years this summer. Yeah. Wow. So you guys have some great experience and just insight to this whole marriage thing. So um, that's just exciting. And, uh, and so um, today we're actually here because we're talking about Julie's new book, um, Pulling Back the Shades. And you co-authored this with Dana Gresh? That's right. Yeah, Dana is, uh, is the founder of Pure Freedom. And she, I guess a lot of the people that would follow your ministry, Jennifer, would know about Dana because she's been ministering to teenagers and young adults for many years now mm. on sexual purity and modesty and, and just how to walk that out. Mm. How was it co-authoring with her on that? Because um, as I read, it flowed so easily. It was, I, I mentioned in my review of the book that it was like one voice. And I point that back to God's voice, like he just moved through you guys. But what was it like that going back and forth with each other? You know, it was really intense because we wrote the book, book very quickly. We wrote it in about two months. Wow. So it was a real intense time of seeking God together. We don't live in the same state. So we had to communicate through the phone and through email. And uh, we didn't know out of the gate that we'd be writing in two different voices. It was just kind of how... God led us as we started to attack the topic, and uh, and it seemed like a 
it gave Dana and me both more freedom to just share our stories and to share our heart. And we're just grateful uh, to see that God was able to weave it all together to have His voice come out strong and clear. It was. It was. It was a uh, very, very clear as I read. It was great. And um, actually, in the dedication, you mentioned Linda Dillo, and so I was just curious if you could share a little bit more about what. Um, her mentorship did for you, um, not only as an author, but also as a woman and and a wife? Yeah, um, not only what her mentorship did for me, but continues to do for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Linda and I met about three years ago when I interviewed her. I was on the broadcast at Focus on the Family at the time, and she was my guest. And uh, the Lord just connected our hearts. I had been praying that God would bring an older woman in ministry uh, to just be a mentor for me. And I just kind of figured out that was you pretty early on, Linda. And uh, what Linda has done is not just paved the way for us to write books like Pulling Back the Shades and Passion Pursuit um, and to talk about issues of sexuality from a biblical perspective. She has done that. But for me, even more so, Linda's really taught me how to seek God. You know, I remember when we first started writing Passion Pursuit together, a Bible study that Linda and I uh, co-authored. And when we first began to write, she was saying, you know, God is going to be our co-author. He's going to write through us. And I didn't really know what that looked like. And uh, I really have learned from Linda what it is to get on your knees and not to not to start with what do I want to say, but to start by really seeking what is God. That is awesome. Uh, you know, going throughout the book, um, there were certain parts where I put a little UW because it reminded me so much of the message that I tried to convey through Unveiled Wife, and I thought that that was really cool. I really connected in that way to the book. Um, you know, there was a, there were specific parts that both you and Dana. Um, unveiled yourselves and you you talked about transparency and and um specifically there was one part where you talk about how you never realized that you you lacked intimacy with god and so i was wondering if you could just share a little bit more about that and how maybe um how a lack of intimacy with god affects uh, intimacy issues with your husband yeah i would love to um i i I think it was probably only maybe like two and a half years ago, and again, largely through Linda's influence, that I realized that there was more possible to my relationship with God, and uh, that I felt like I knew how to serve Him, I knew how to, to love Him and be obedient, but I saw in Linda's life and her ministry this intimacy with God that I, th I think at some level we we assume is kind of reserved for the super saints like A.W. Tozer can have that and Amy Carmichael could have had it and um, you know just special people get that intimacy with him and I started to realize that that's not the case that actually God longs to be intimate that intimate with each of us mm -hmm. and it's our decision of how badly do I want it. Uh, you know, and Scripture says that you'll seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And uh, and I really had to confront the lie that I had just lived with that this is as good as it can get. You know, serving God is the best that I can achieve here on earth. And I started to really pursue the idea that God was offering me a deeper relationship, a deeper walk with Him. And that transformed everything. Mm -hmm. And um, and just to know that that's available for every woman who just has a heart to seek after God, there's no limit to how deeply we can know Him and how intimately we can walk with Him. And then, Jennifer, you asked, how does that relate to, to marital intimacy? You know, the Scripture tells us both explicitly but also implicitly through the whole story of the Bible that covenant and marriage and sexuality is a metaphor that is designed to tell us something about intimacy with God. Yeah. And, uh, and so as you pursue intimacy in your marriage, as you want more from your husband, as you want more in sexuality, you keep saying, it's got to get better than this. I know that there's something better than this. It mirrors that same seeking of, I know there's more to God than what I'm walking with. I want more. And, uh, and in both cases, that wanting more is a really good thing. It's a wonderful thing for me as a wife to say, I know my intimacy with my husband can be deeper than it is. Mm -hmm. I know it can be more pure. I know it can be more fulfilling, and I want to set my heart on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we find, and I found this in my own life, that 
when I began to work on one of those areas of intimacy, it flowed over into the other one. Tell her about how the Lord spoke to you when you were having your quiet time one night. <laughs> well, he's done this more than one night, but uh, but there have been many times uh, when I've been seeking the Lord in my quiet time and wanting that intimacy with God. And I'll get the sense that God will just say, you know, go up and uh, be with your husband, initiate with him. And, uh, and put your Bible down, <laughs> Julie. <laughs> put it down, and you know, go live out. Um, you know, this this most intimate relationship is what God cares about. And so, at first, when I first started to hear that several years ago, I'd be like, No, why would God want me to do that? This is my quiet time. And I started. This is really important. This is more important than sex. Yeah. You know, but I started to realize that as we draw close to God and as we ask Him to teach us what it is to love him, one of the most practical ways of showing that is how you love your husband. Mm. And one of the most difficult ways for me, particularly at the time, was to show my husband love in the sexual area. And, uh, and so God started to burden my heart that, again, there's a parallel, that as you want to love God more, one of the most tangible ways he'll challenge you is how you love your husband. And uh, so that was definitely an intersection there. <laughs> wow, that's, that's so cool. Um, thank you for sharing that. Okay, um, so one thing that I was kind of um, at first shocked to hear when I opened up your book, Pulling Back the Shades, was that you dived into the Fifty Shades of Grey series um, to be able to understand uh, why women were so drawn to it. So I didn't know if you could share or expand a little bit more about your experience of doing that and maybe your findings. Yeah, um, she's the one who made me do it, so I'm going to blame her. It's my fault, Jennifer. Yeah. So uh, I did read the three books in the Fifty Shades of Grey series um, very reluctantly, and Linda read them as well the same time I was reading them, just as a way of covering in prayer. Um, it was I, I read them with fear and trepidation, you know, be, knowing that each of the books is about 500 pages. So you're reading 1,500 pages of uh, literature that is pornography mm -hmm. and is designed to get your heart and your mind and your body to respond sexually. And, uh, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of, there's more than just pornography in there. There's a lot of darkness and uh, mm -hmm. spiritual themes and there's um, bondage and, and, and just some really dark things in there. And so uh, Linda and I uh, read those books really in a spirit of prayer um, for me, I was so afraid of reading them that uh, I, I re just re literally read them on my knees mm -hmm. because I felt like that was a way of saying to the Lord why I was reading them and that I wanted His protection over my heart and mind. And it also was very uncomfortable to read on your knees. So it's not like you could relax and get too pulled in. Um, our findings, you can share some of it as well, Linda. But what, I think one of the most shocking things for me was that it wasn't just the sexuality that was so offensive, but some of the spiritual themes going yeah. through the books that even were more alarming. And women aren't talking about that. They just are talking about the sexuality, but not to the fa fact that there are other spiritual themes. Right. Women write into our website saying, I don't know why you're against these books because they help my marriage. And these are Christian women. And uh, I just wonder how you can read them and not see the spiritual message that's coming across. Uh, the main character of the book, his name is Christian. Mm -hmm. His mother's name is Grace. And the young woman that he seduces, her name is Anastasia, which means resurrection. Mm -hmm. And in each of the three books, there are um, two words that are used a hundred times in each of the books. And the first is the F word that we don't want to say. The second is the word holy. And usually the word holy is paired with a swear word. And that offended both of us so much. That offended us almost more than the horrible sexual scenes. Mm -hmm. Because God's name is holy. And the third person of the Trinity, holy, is part of his name. He's the Holy Spirit. And to take that precious word that describes God and use it in vile ways just 
made us both want to be sick, literally. Yeah. You, you actually explain um, more about that in your book, Julie. And um, I, was, I was, yeah, grotesque at the fact that um, those themes were written about, you know, throughout that series. And um, I just love that the detail that you pulled into the light and exposed and, and help, you helped women understand why we should care that that, that is um, explicitly against God, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think Jennifer is realizing that um, you know, does Satan wanna us to get into immoral sexual things? Yeah, he does. But that's not the ultimate goal. You know, the ultimate goal is to separate us from Jesus and to um and to keep us from worshiping Jesus in a holy way, to keep us from being set apart. And uh and the sex is just the way he's doing it. Um but you've got to look beyond that and say Satan has an, a very aggressive agenda. And then becomes the question, am, am I playing into that agenda? Right. And uh, that's what we, we most want women to realize. And, um, you know, this series, and there's, there's many more other types out there that, um, like you said, Linda, women are saying, but it helped my marriage. What would you say to those women? And Because and, I know that there's even some in my community that would defend the, the Fifty Shades of Grey or other things like it and say, but it helped my marriage. What is your response to them? Well, um, you know, first of all, I would say, it, did it really help your marriage? You know, let's distinguish that from we had a couple weeks where I was much more interested in sex than I normally am. Mm -hmm. And um, will it spike your libido? Will it get you interested in sex for a while? Yeah, it probably will. So will pornography. Um, but that's not helping your marriage. Um, again, it might make you interested in sex for a short period of time. But sex is very different from intimacy. Yeah. You know, sex is about how your body is responding. Intimacy is about a deeper shared experience with your husband, being vulnerable, um, being able to be safe with him and him safe with you. And, uh, and, you know, how do you feel? How would you feel if your husband is coming to the bedroom and he's interested in sex, but it's only because he's thinking about something he saw on the computer. He's thinking about another woman. Mm -hmm. And you're training your heart and your mind and your sexuality to respond to somebody other than your husband. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that erodes intimacy. That will drive a wedge between you. That will mean that you're training yourself to look outside of your marriage mm -hmm. to be sexually stimulated instead of looking into your marriage and building true intimacy. And, uh, and, Lin Linda and I wrote this other book, this other Bible study, Passion Pursuit. Um, really, it's an it's the answer to Fifty Shades of Grey. It's uh, we didn't even know Fifty Shades of Grey wasn't even really there when we were writing it, but it's God's design of how you heighten intimacy in marriage, how you heighten sexual pleasure in a, in a godly way, and uh, and so we want to show women, yeah. Hey, I want my love life, my sex life to be better than it is. I want to work on that. There's a godly way of doing that. And then there's really a counterfeit way. Yeah, a counterfeit way. And that's what Fifty Shades is. It's a counterfeit. Mm. Yeah. Um, so along with that, it sounds like that uh, uh, other book that you wrote could um, uh, be the answer to this next question. But um, I, I was exposed to um, pornography and um, erotica and, and things in my childhood and early teenage years that affected me um, even well into marriage. Mm -hmm. So for women like me who have been exposed to these things um, or maybe have um, relied on fantasy to be able to uh, stimulate their bodies, um, and, and especially wives, you know, women who are trying to be intimate with their husbands but keep going back to maybe the images in their mind or, or creating stories. What is a practical way that they can break that bondage and break that reliance so that they can be fulfilled wholly by their husbands? Mm -hmm. Jennifer, uh, it says in Romans 12, and you know this, that, uh, that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Mm -hmm. And the way our mind is renewed is through God's Word. And uh, what we tried to do in Passion Pursuit, and we will send you the workbook and the DVD oh. so you can know about it. But um, 
I think um, I would say a whole lot of women have had the experience that you have. Very few Christian women ever walk down the aisle without uh, junk in their mind and in their heart from their wrong choices or from great evil that was done to them or a combination of both. And uh, what we hoped to do and pray that God did through Passion Pursuit is, is to really step by step take a woman through God's word in how to have her mind renewed and her heart renewed, which will renew her body mm. and will renew her relationship with her husband. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, the, the best way I can describe it is if you see, um, if you see sexuality and intimacy in marriage as a, a, a pathway or a race and you're starting at point A and you've got to get through, you know, all the way to the end, um, you've got two problems. First of all, you've got roadblocks in the way. And you're walking down the path towards intimacy. You're walking down the path towards sexual excitement with your husband. And all of a sudden, a woman runs into a stop sign or a big boulder. That is fear or it might be uh, a lie that it's not right for a Christian woman to enjoy sex this much. Or it might be, I don't know if I can trust my husband. But she runs into something that stops her in her mind. And the second problem she runs into, and a lot of times these go together, is there's a shortcut. There's a shortcut that says, well, I can get to the finish line of being fulfilled um, and just take this little shortcut that I've trained myself to go to, which might be a fantasy or thinking about a boyfriend in the past or Mm -hmm. an image of pornography. And so, you know, really healing means doing two things. It means addressing what those roadblocks are, what the boulders are, and we do that in passion pursuit, identifying the lies that you believe down the road, identifying the hurt and the pain that's keeping you from true intimacy, but also identifying what those shortcuts are and seeing how in the long run they're really not doing you any good. Mm -hmm. And when you do those two things, you retrain your brain, you retrain your body um, to run the full race of what it looks like to enjoy real intimacy with your husband. Okay, thank you so much. Um, This last question comes from uh, a woman in my community that had a question for you. Um, And she starts out by saying, um, hold on one second. I feel in the midst of intimacy I am sinning because of what I was told in my past, even though I am now married. Is anything other than intercourse acceptable? You know, we answer that in detail in Passion Pursuit, and the answer is yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. um, You know, she mentioned two things. First of all, that that guilt, that lingering guilt that somehow this must be wrong. And uh, as Linda and I have talked to women, Linda, you've talked to women around the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, She was a missionary in Eastern Europe and Asia and had ministered everywhere. And, uh, and. Women have the same issue of pairing sexuality somehow with guilt and shame. And that's that's the enemy. You know, he wants you to believe that lie that somehow, even though you're married, this isn't quite right. And so uh, addressing that first issue is key. But then as Linda said, you know, intimacy is more than intercourse. You can have intercourse without intimacy. And you can have intimacy between a husband and wife, sexual intimacy, without intercourse. Um, there's all kinds of things that might involve just sexual play and enjoying each other that in the marriage bed are ordained by God and given by God to enjoy. And we have a whole chapter in Passion Pursuit on how do you know if something's okay? You know, we get asked a lot of very frank questions. Really frank questions. (laughs) And we address them all because we want people to know what does the Bible say about these things and how do I apply it in my life? That's great. Okay, so um, before we wrap up, I want to uh, let the community know where these resources are available, how they can get their hands on them. So um, you, you've already mentioned some. Um, do you guys want to take some time and just share where these books are available? Yeah. You want me to do that? Sure. I mean, obviously, you can get them on Amazon. Okay. You can okay. click your computer and get them. You can get them at CBD, Christian Booksellers. Um, you can get them at our website, AuthenticIntimacy.com, okay. and um, in a Christian bookstore. Yeah, and um, at our website, AuthenticIntimacy.com, you can find those resources and more. But also, 
you know, we're, we're building a community where it's safe for women to talk about these issues. We have a weekly podcast called Java with Julie, where we talk about these issues very openly. Uh, and that's a weekly podcast you can just subscribe to through our website. And uh, we've got questions that women ask and answers. And so you'll find a blog and, yeah, and links to just helpful resources. So that would be a good place to start. Wow, thank you guys so much. And thank you for just your passion and obedience to God to be able to equip women with, um, with these resources and with the okay to just know that they can be transparent with their struggles and that just because we're Christian doesn't mean that we're perfect. And, um, and again, just specifically intimacy in marriage, um, that, that is just a huge topic that I believe needs to be addressed and you guys are addressing it. And so thank you so much for your diligence in this and um, providing us with those resources. Yeah. And uh, Jennifer, thanks for what you're doing. Thank yeah, you. We for appreciate it. and we're excited that God's raising you up as a young woman to just carry the torch. That's Thank right. you so much. Thank you. It, it is definitely a passion of mine, and I hope that I can keep going as long as He allows me. <laughs> so, um, well, we just, uh, you know, praise God and thank Him for this time today. And um, I'm eager to share this interview with uh, the Unveiled Wife community and also hopefully with your community, um, Authentic Intimacy. So uh, thank you, ladies, and I hope that you have a really great day. You too, you too Jennifer. Okay. Bye. Bye.